These are the three most common places you should check for gold every time you go to a creek. Well, maybe not every time, like if the creek's got gold in it. Take off your shoes, scooch past your iced coffee for your snuffer bottle, and grab yourself a blue circle and a gadzi. Get in the pan, all in. I can't get any. Blue circles like this one are known as gold pans, and they're really good at finding gold. But they only really work if you put dirt in them. The first place you should check on any creek is an inside bend. Most of the time the gold's gonna be so heavy it sinks to the bedrock. So you wanna dig down until you find a compacted layer of gravel or the bedrock itself. There are actually several inside bends here, even though they're small. This is one just here, this is one just here, and then it goes to a straight section and we have another inside bend just here. I can already hear you asking the question, why do you wanna dig on an inside bend? Well, it's really simple, it's a corner. And if you've driven a car before, you'll know that you have to go slower around corners. Unless, of course, you like being a pavement crown, just like this. <laughs> the same thing happens for gold. Gold is suspended either in the water in flood or it's been dragged along the bottom. And any time you have to go slower than the speed required for the gold to move, the gold stops moving. So inside bend means you've got to slow down. That's where the gold collects. Not every inside bend will have gold, but a lot of them do. Hello, spider. Check that beautiful little spider out. How cool is he? I'm already seeing a whole bunch of stuff I really like in here. Lots of black sand. Black sand is stuff like tin, ironstone, magnetite, and hematite. All these are much heavier than most of the material that's in a creek. And therefore they collect near and with the gold. So if you see a lot of it, you could be near some gold. But as Pioneer Paulie says, the first sign of gold is there's a good indication that there's gold around. Even though gold is 19 times heavier than water and tries to sink as fast as it can, it does take considerable amounts of time for it to reach the bottom. And therefore your gold might be found in layers. You might have a rich deposit on top, nothing for a little while, and then more gold on the bedrock. So if you're not getting it in the top, keep checking different layers. A lot of people wonder why we don't always check the big rocks at the bottom. You absolutely should because they could contain gold, but more often than not, they're just a big fat chunky rock that can go back in the creek. Because in an alluvial stream like this, we're looking for flower gold, not those big nuggets you'd find metal detecting. We got plenty of that black sand, but I know you guys don't care about the black sand. You wanna see if there's any yellow stuff in here. I reckon we're gonna see a little bit of gold. I don't think we're gonna see heaps. Normally you'd get a lot more black sand than this if you were gonna get a great pan. And yeah, we have a few specks of gold in here. Remember that this pan was less than half full and those are the pieces of gold that I managed to recover. Every single one of these tiny little flakes here is worth about two US cents. That makes this about a 30 cent pan. And if I had it completely full, it might've been 60 to 70 cents worth of gold. That doesn't sound like much, but you hit the right inside bend, you can pick up three, four, five, ten dollars worth of gold in a single pan. Don't forget to use your snuffer bottle. The next spot we're looking for is undercut banks like this. Can you see all the grass and stuff that slumped into the water? That means the last flood that came through here took all the soil from underneath that grass and the top fell in. And the same thing is happening in this area here. As that fast water cuts in underneath the bank, it blows all the light material away and all the heavies and gold drop down. If the creek that you're on is rich enough, these undercuts will have a significantly larger portion of gold than the center of your creek and sometimes even in your inside bends. You're gonna need your blue circle. And then you gotta stick your shovel way in and under. And see if you can find some sticky gravel. Just like that. Woo, mama. Once again, I'm looking for things like black sand to indicate that there are heavy materials in this dirt. And if I find enough of them, I might be as successful as Gadzi. So successful. When I grow up, I want to be just like Gadzi. Wow. <laughs> All right, calm down, show off. Calm down. How long have you been here for? Oh, a few hours now. How many hours? Too many hours. Look, this is only a single scoop, so I'm not expecting a bonanza in here. But if we get as much as the last pan, it kind of proves the point that there's gold there. Undercut banks work exactly the same as a sluice box, washing away all the light dirt and keeping all of the heavy things like the gold. But this spot really only works if there is a small amount of gold in the gravels in the bank. Not quite as much black sand in this pan, but that's okay. The richer in gold the undercut bank is, the more gold you're gonna get in those undercuts. And remember, you're not digging in the bank, you're digging underneath it where the water has already eroded. Hopefully Senor Sweat Boots over there gives us some luck. We actually see more than one little flake of gold. 
Hey, we got a couple little flakies in there. Obviously, we didn't get quite as many flakes. We got a few little ones over here, and that's our biggest one just there. That's probably only a 10 cent pan. The problem with undercut banks is that you're really looking along a very long stretch of ground for the richest spot. So if you get gold in any of that section, keep hunting along it, you might just find a bonanza. Now, I have kind of been saving the best for last. I know there's good gold in this spot, and I'm going to explain what you should be looking for. I fell in a hole that Gabby was just digging. This undercut bank has concentrated all its gold right on this inside bend but this inside bend has another thing you should be looking out for and that is bedrock down the bottom the best gold is almost always on bedrock so if you get exposed bedrock at any point during a gold bearing creek have a very careful look around it you might just find a literal bonanza this spot right here is possibly one of the richest spots i've ever worked in my entire life i didn't film anything the other day because man i was just enjoying myself too much so we're going to jump back in there today we're just going to see. You can actually hear the bedrock. That's gravel. But listen for the bedrock. I know it's there somewhere. There. Hear how the shovel's a lot more solid? It's got a took to it as opposed to just a scraping noise from the gravel. That bedrock is where the gold's sitting. Along with some big old rocks. That's the stuff. Smooth, hard bedrock is great, but if you can find bedrock like this, that's decaying and breaking up, that's a perfect gold trap. At the end of the day, all good gold prospectors are willing to try things. If you don't find gold on one inside bend, it doesn't mean there's no gold on every inside bend. Keep trying. You'll eventually find it, I promise. So why bedrock? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's the one thing gold can't penetrate through. Solid rock. Smooth, hard bedrock, unless there's crevices, is usually less productive than decaying bedrock like I'm working here. The thousands of tiny micro fractures are where the gold hides. The reason bedrock is so important is because gold is 19 times heavier than water. And that means that the bedrock is about the only thing that's going to stop it from sinking. That includes the black sand. So the pieces of gold and black sand, the more of them there are in your pan, the more likely it is you're going to get a good pan. And the more likely it is that the deposit on the bedrock hasn't been touched in a number of years. That's right, if you're picking up decaying bedrock, it means that no other prospector has touched it before. And so it's likely to be far richer than your normal deposit. This is amongst the richest ground I've ever worked when it comes to bedrock. And so your results may vary, but I promise you if you're able to get to bedrock, it's more than likely going to give you a whole bunch of gold. That is two and a half shovels worth. That right there is why we hunt for bedrock. Gemstones, black sand, and an absolute bonanza of gold. That's three common places that you should be checking for gold every time you go out prospecting.